uh, first i will like to introduce uh, about beacon uh, what is who is beacon and what it does uh, so beacon is india's largest solidworks reseller since 2002 and we have trained more than 50000 engineers uh, from our customer side and also we uh, authorize them through a authorized training center where we provide the sol certification and help them uh, with our uh, technical support uh, throughout the design process that was a quick glimpse of uh, what we can does let's uh, dive into the today's main topic which is hassle free cloud design data management with innovia now uh, for today's agenda uh, we will have it in four parts where uh, you will see why Uh, cloud why innovia is hassle free and how it enables the function uh, functional design process in which we will use the detail motor top design demo and in end we will summarize the key takeaways throughout our webinar now if we look at the innovia plm uh, we will see what are the advantages so as uh, all the plm functionality works on single source of truth so that the all the data is centrally managed and it is secured uh, on the same platform now as uh, the data, data is a single source of truth so that the development cycle time is reduced and also as all the disciplines all all the organizations works in parallel so the this enables innovation and at the same time not only the design process but other process such as project planning task allocations and with the review processes can be run simultaneously along with it which helps in resource planning and management and with a single product definition where all the organization or the departments works on single file this reduces the design errors and also this keeps the latest information Uh, on the fingertips of all the stakeholders now if we look at uh, the customer who is planning to go with the plm what are the main hassles uh, he came across the first the major one is a hardware so the data centers the servers uh, also the supporting uh, hardware needs to be done let's say backup servers are needs to be done on the organization level and also to manage that we need to hire the it resource such as it team should be there and also on the it teams uh, head there is hassles of uh, daily backups and also the security side also and also the after that the upgradations of softwares and all the things are should be done by the it uh, professionals only and if the teams are working on multi locations uh this the collaboration between them becomes more difficult and also uh, the major thing which uh, every organization has is a data security uh, this data security needs to be handled by the organization itself and uh, also the not only the physical threats but also the cyber threats needs to be addressed in this now if we go for the you know we have plm this hassles could be freed by using a scalable model where you pay as per the use uh, as your company grows the users grows you can add as per the users and it that's why it's easily scalable and as uh, we saw that the it team needs to manage the servers data upgradation and all here all these responsibilities will be on the source the source responsibility the data backup and all the things will be done automatically so that the it persons over it persons hassles will be reduced so that uh, he gets an easier maintenance also the software upgradations will be pushed automatically through uh, to the all the users now if you look at the multi location team or multi departmental uh, collaboration as uh, this is cloud based it we can have a real time collaboration between the stakeholders uh, whether uh, is the same he is in same location or in a different location by using a simple platform which can be accessed through multiple devices uh, in any device touch enabled any device we can use that 
and with the data security standards highest standards such as iso 27002 we will ensure that the uh, data is secured using multiple layers and if you look at the multiple layers there, there's a high layer security in most of the cases we see up to three layers which is up to application but here we also have a virtual system on which the physical and the cyber threats will be tested and uh, this is done in a regular period of time and all the necessary security updates will be pushed on to the actual server. Also, the physical security layer is also there so that the uh, data which is stored is secured through these five layers. Now, let's look at the design process. If you look uh, it, in the bird's eye view, it starts with RFQ submission and it's end with the release of uh, bill of material. In between those, there are multiple steps. We will use these steps to uh, see how uh, Innovia PLM can help us uh, to accommodate these things. Now we will start with the RFQ submission. Uh, in this, we will see what are the uh, non-care files we can uh, we can arrange, we can manage with this. Also, uh, how we can use the design templates already created uh, and how we can use the design structure. Also, uh, there are uh, people who use Microsoft tools and how we can uh, access those Microsoft tools through the PLM only. Now, if we look at on the platform, we get a login ID and password. By, just like in social media, we can log in through the email ID and password and in which we will greet with a dashboard. This is a fully customized dashboard where all the necessary apps can be placed. Uh, so as per the user or as per the project, this can be placed and which can be shared through the organization. Now, if you look at the uh, process for the RFQ, which can be catered using route management. Here we can create a new route, which is approval processes. And we can use the templates, which already stored, which already created by the organization so that all uh, process remain standard. And we can, do multiple uh, settings such as what's the purpose of route like we want to approve it or we want to uh, just do the basic approval process and notify ourselves or we want to change the maturity of the product these types of purposes can also be set and also the other functions such as rejection and all can also be set now as you can see as per the templates all the steps will be automatically added so uh, in here, there are multiple series approval processes, but this can also be a parallel. Like if in organization, there are multiple approvals at one stage that can also be catered using the same uh, route management tool. And now, as you can see, if I click on any task here, that particular uh, function uh, can be assigned to a particular assignee. So that can also be possible if we want to assign a particular uh, work to a different uh, person that can be do uh, that, in, that can be done by putting a person's name in assignee box same can be done with the multiple uh, let's say task allocations and uh, if we want to have a document present on this route which uh, needs to be reviewed uh, throughout the process that all documents can be added by just simply searching for the document and selecting and either by dragging and dropping or placing OK, we can add those content. Now throughout the process, these contents uh, will be pushed uh, through the approval process and visible to all the stakeholders which are uh, involved in this RFQ submission. Now, if we see uh, this type of uh, completed to do or uh, which say uh, in work stars can be viewed, uh, let's say I, the person who was previous to me has done his work and the next uh, task is assigned to me. Now we, I can see that in my uh, task management where it will automatically populate the task which I need to do. And as you can see in the content, the uh, documents which we added in the route are also visible here. I can view them, I can comment on them. And after uh, all the necessary study, I can uh, approve the task. So as you can see after approval, it will automatically jump right to the next stage. And the next person will be notified through a notification and then he will start his work. 
So this is how the RFQ process can be catered. And after uh, doing all the RFQ, the CAD non-CAD files can also be managed through the document management application. Now here in this application, you can see all the documents are listed uh, in the list format. I can uh, simply change uh, their maturity to let's say put it in in work or put it in release. And also if I want to have the revisions or also if I want to have let's say uh, edit those, I can collaborate with uh, my actual machine where I can see all the files on the my uh, file explorer itself. And also I can open this uh, in the respective application such as let's say word file is there. I can open the word file uh, by just simply double clicking it and it will initiate the Microsoft Word. As you can see on the top, there is a 3D experience tab already present, which can be used to save the necessary changes or revise the document. So this is how we can also cater the non-CAD files using the Inuvia PLA. So for the RFQ, we see how we seamlessly uh, get uh, collaborated with uh, our organizations through the cloud. And also we how we manage the non-CAD data uh, in the uh, other two process. Now the next thing after uh, creating the RFQ, let's say uh, the, de the design which we are working has been finalized by the RFQ team. And now uh, we have to uh, project plan it. Now in the project planning, we can uh, have a Gantt chart view in which we can as uh, assign the tasks to the respective uh, team members. And also uh, based on those tasks, we will have the uh, great idea uh, on the dashboard itself, which tasks are complete, incomplete. That kind of thing can be managed, can be viewed easily with the real time updates on our platform. Let's say uh, in this case, we use a different touch enabled device which is added. Uh, as you can see, we are, we are having the same dashboard in our uh, iPad also. This is the uh, user interface of a project planning application where you can see there are multiple tasks, multiple sub projects uh, assigned to uh, this development process of a DTV shader product. And also there are multiple uh, milestones where the review uh, is going to be done. In this uh, milestone also in the project planning, we can also have the phase gate system uh, enabled approval process can also be catered in this application itself. Now, uh, if you double click on any task, you can see on the, my right hand side, the similar window which we are previously viewing in the task management can be seen uh, in which the uh, priority of the task, the uh, parent project can be set, the no, CAD data can be added. Also the assigned persons can also be changed or multiple, if there are multiple person that can also be possible to have the multiple person working on a single task. All these processes can be done with this within a single environment and after uh, scheduling all the tasks, which that can be viewed uh, inside the task management window where all the tasks will be listed in the different different categories such as to do in work completed and which can also be changed. Let's say uh, I want to have a classification based on priority or I want to have a classification based on a date like uh, is there any today tomorrow if they're in a in this week or in future that can also be possible similar classification is automatic can be automatically done also uh, in members all the necessary stakeholders in content all the necessary either the cad data or the non cad data can be added and also uh, in uh, for the higher management uh, the data uh, or the metrics is the major thing where uh, on the table format, we does not get a clear idea of the values, uh, let's say of the sales number, uh, all the finances, all those things. But with the help of metrics reader, we can turn those table formats into a beautiful, let's say pie chart uh, or a bar graph. Uh, all those kind of beautiful things can be done, which will be automatically categorized. And it's easier and it's also uh, better to view in this format where all the data we can see in the graphical format and also for the latest update on the uh, let's say industry vertical we can have the metric uh, the feed reader where we can add the news articles which will auto populate on the dashboard itself so that we will have a 
latest information of the world or the industry we, which we are we are catering on our fingertips so that we will we will not miss any uh, upgrade or any latest development so this is how the project and planning uh, can be done where we see uh, how we can plan uh, using any device uh, here in this case we use ipad which is uh, like movable device and that can also be used to ask, assign the task to the respected people and uh, to the stakeholders the kpis can be viewed also on the dashboard uh, you can view the which tasks are completed which are assigned to a single person uh, and also the classification based on uh, the person wise classification can also be viewed on the dashboard itself now uh, after all these processes the main things comes to the design data management like uh, the user who is working on the cad which is solidworks uh, will have uh, let's say a better connection or integrated solution inside the solidworks window itself where he does not have to leave the environment and uh, to work on the plm solution in which uh, he can cater not only the data management but also the revisions uh, the life cycle uh, all these things can also be presented or viewed in the solidworks window itself so like let's jump into the solidworks and as you can see i can access all the necessary uh, tools from our uh, Inovia right inside my SOLIDWORKS window. So the user who is working on SOLIDWORKS, there is no need to leave this window to uh, get idea what things should be done. So similar task management can task management window can also be visible uh, within the application, and I can uh, also uh, interact with it. And as you can see, with the information I have on my task, I can simply open the part file which is or the assembly file which is present here in the attachment by simply open or by dragging and dropping it into the SOLIDWORKS window. So now as you can see the uh, assembly file has been opened and on my right hand side you can see all the necessary information uh, from the server like uh, which files are saved, which files are needs to be uh, edited or saved again. And if I want to have an idea which sub, which main assembly is used this sub assembly, which can be catered using the relations tool. So as you can see, uh, with the relation, I can easily find out the main assemblies. If there are multiple, I can open those multiple assembly within the same environment, just like a sub assembly. So this is the, this is a very helpful tool where the changes we are going to make, uh, in which we are those changes will be initiated can be seen. Now with the reserve feature, we can uh, make sure that uh, any person who is working on a similar assembly or similar part will not uh, overwrite our design work. So this reserve and uh, lock and unlock feature helps us to uh, reduce the design errors which we saw earlier in this webinar. Now, uh, after creating or the making all the changes, now I can save it on the platform now here I have option to add a new revision and also I can add the comment to it so that in the future there is a history uh, to that part. So that in future I can uh, let's say jump back to previous revision, I can jump back to another revision. Now here for the better identification we can set a enterprise item number which is a unique identification number to a part which will be automatically uh, let's say a counter which a trailing counter so that the number will be not uh, a doubled or number will be not again replaced. Now, as you can see, after create done creating all the work, I will simply uh, unlock the part. And now, if I go to the main sub assembly, there is a main question like uh, for the part number we have done for let's say a uh, single part. But what if I want to apply uh, all uh, the unique identification or the enterprise item number to whole sub assembly? That is also possible by just simply shift clicking all the necessary part files which we want to have the part number uh, assigned and by simply clicking the barcode icon i can assign the counter to each enterprise uh, each part here you can see the number will be trailing only if the the same part is used twice 
there will be only the same number assigned to that. So that functionality is also there. For the similar part, there will be no uh, different part number. Now, uh, as for the uh, as we done for the part, we saved it on the uh, platform by doing the revision. Same can be done with the assembly also. So as you can see, I am creating a new revision as we have made changes so that the history will be uh, kept uh, by I have made the changes. And I can access those changes in the future also. Now with the maturity, I can put this part to the approval where my manager will uh, see the part file on the platform itself. He will approve like we saw in the route management, how we can he can approve uh, and he will put it in release where it will be released to the manufacturing so that as my task is done, I will simply shift it to completed so that the uh, higher management will let know that the task has been completed. Now, uh, in the data management, we saw how uh, the, all the apps which are present on the Inovia are integrated in, inside the Solidox window itself so that the user will not have to leave the Solidworks window for the ones. And also, uh, how we can set the unique, unique identification number, how we can set the, uh, see the relations of the different uh, part assembly, sub assemblies. Also, the division management of parts as well as assemblies and also the drawings can be done. And with, uh, let's say, maturities, we can put the approval processes or we can release the documents to the manufacturing with ease. Now, as uh, all the documents have been shared uh, with manufacturing, there uh, will be a case where manufacturing team or let's say assembly team will came across uh, different, different uh, measures uh, to change the part. Let's say they came across any changes that should be done in order to reduce the weight, that can be also possible. In the regular process, these uh, types of messages were conveyed through informal uh, source such as WhatsApp, face-to-face -face conversation or email. But here in Innovia, we also cater those types of informal communications also, where uh, the communities can be built based on projects, based on departments, where uh, we can connect with different, different peoples to have the information sharing uh, within the departments in the organization. So if we look at the communities, this is the user interface of community where you can see uh, I have a different, different messages from different, different people where uh, I can easily view, uh, let's say, screenshot shared uh, with a notes and markup added uh, to it to reduce the weight, which we have done in previous, uh, let's say, design change. Similar can be done with the different, different projects. And this data will be stored in a uh, timeline manner so that in future, if we want to, let's say, I want to have a look at the changes to be uh, made, changes we made during the previous project, that is also possible, where which is not possible in the regular means such as face-to-face -face conversation or WhatsApp message. So let's say uh, if uh, a user who is not a part of a design team needs to have uh, assign the task that can also be done within the community itself where he can uh, put a post such uh, in the to do template where he can assign the particular task to particular people uh, which let's say in this case he is assigning task or I am assigning the task to the design person so that that person will be, get notified that the in community there is a to do uh, post and in which uh, I need to work and as the, the progress does, uh, this in-work uh, stage will be uh, simply put it into completed. And the design changes will be can also be conveyed through the community so that the person who is working on the shop floor will have an idea that the uh, process of change has been done and he can further pro proceed with the assembly or let's say manufacturing. Uh, so with the community, we have seen how uh, it's easier and it's more reliable to have uh, the community to connect to the peers using the conversation or either the uh, communities based on project or departments. Also, the information which we are sharing, uh, it's real time. Uh, and uh, as uh, everyone, if even if the everyone working on remotely, uh, they are always on the single platform and they are always in collaboration, live collaboration. Now, uh, let's say there are uh, changes 
addressed in the community but there are some issues uh, within the assembly which needs to be addressed and which needs to be uh, keep track throughout the process that can be done with the issue and change management where all these tools uh, for the issue and change management related to art assembly uh, in day to day life we tend to use the pdfs or printed files uh, to make the changes or uh, to mark the changes but uh, that to have a disadvantage where the there is a no better idea of which parts of the whole assembly needs to be changed if the assembly is too big uh, to the person uh, to identify a perfect part now uh, with the innovia platform uh, it's much easier to have a uh, assembly uh, in a 3d view where we can assign the issue in the 3d environment itself if we look at the issue management here you can see i can view the city on the platform itself as we saw earlier there are uh, let's say this is the main sub assembly which needs to be changed i can simply view it in 3d uh, and also i can drag and drop from my old structure to view it in 3d and to start my uh, marking where the changes need to be done now uh, simply i can mark those thing using let's say uh, circles text or even the arrow heads and with this uh, the user who is working on this will have a better idea so that uh, he will not wander upon uh, the 2d so and as we are giving the specific location of the part which needs to be changed and also the uh, necessary information here you can see from the markup tool i can initiate the issue so in the issue the necessary uh, documents uh, which we are adding automatically gets added and also i can put the due date uh, to the specific uh, issue as you can see in the content the assembly has been automatically added also in the attachment there is a markup file which is a uh, scribble we done on the uh, 3d environment so that also is attached and now i can assign this issue to a particular person will who is working on the uh, this particular part to change it now as i click start the issue will be initiated the owners or the stakeholders will get notified and also i can see that in the issue management application also so all those settings we done on the markup can also be viewed in the issue management uh, now i can start this issue i can see the content uh, also i can modify the content also now as i put it in in work uh, and i ch make the changes after making the changes i can simply push it in uh, in approval also also we can uh, assign a change action to it so that all the necessary changes which have been made in the par environment or the assembly environment will be recorded in the solidworks application so that uh, there will be a revision of a particular change and i can go back and see which changes are made so uh, this type of change management and issue management can also be done using a better 3d view where the user will have a better understanding of the changes needs to be done now uh, if you look at the last page which where the bill of material is going to be released now the bill of metal which we see uh, in the design process is a simple bill of metal but in the engineering the engineering bill of metal and manufacturing bill of materials are the different uh, things which needs to be catered at the last stage of let's say assembly or the uh, even last stage of manufacturing now now if we see in the bill of metal we can use the engineering release in which the product uh, tree structure will be easily available and this can also be changed as per our need uh, let's say if we need intended view or we need a flat view that is also possible and as you saw the enterprise item number we have set in solid works that can also be possible in the engineering release also so we can set the enterprise item number in the engineering release also uh i can uh, put all the necessary uh, maturities let's say if there are parts which needs to be released first in order to create a bill of material that is also possible to have 
that function so that uh, we will have a, a perfect bill of material now that this uh, window can be exported in the excel file format with a column and row uh, functionality and if we look at the manufacturing bill of material where uh, there are things such as grease packaging boxes nuts and bolts needs to be added uh, in the manufacturing bill of material so in that the manufacturing item management tool can help us to have those types of products where we are going to utilize uh, let's say grease and packaging equipments or consumables to create a manufacturing bill of material and uh, as same as we saw uh, where we exported the engineering bill, bill of material same can be done with the manufacturing bill of material also uh, the target release date can also be set and as you can see all the necessary uh, information related to that product can be viewed uh, on the platform itself now here uh, i can create multiple types of uh, environment such as parts assemblies uh, or the consumables and i can export them in a csv file format or a excel file format where i can open it and see it in uh, the view uh, which is more familiar to everyone which is a column and row view and i can share this bill of material uh, with the end user Now we have done uh, the engineering bill of material, the manufacturing bill of material, and also uh, we have assigned. Let's say there are parts which needs to have a unique identification number assigned to them, which were left during the uh, design process, or there are products which need to be added uh, using, uh, let's say, consumables or in the manufacturing bill of material. That is also possible to uh, the uh, innovative platform. and all this bill of material can be exported into a uh, csv file format where uh, we can share those uh, with the end user now uh, as we come uh, to the end of this uh, webinar i want to summarize what are the uh, comprehensive capabilities that we have as we saw the data which we have storing is in, in the single environment and also uh this single environments reduces the errors uh, within the industry and also able to manage the not only cad files but also a non cad files and also planning them through a project planner application is also helpful now uh, if we look at the 3d experience platform which is in india uh, which is easily scalable so that it's uh, if a new user is added uh, he can have uh, let's say added roles and responsibilities and he can uh, with the out of the box uh, solution he, he can uh, simply start using all the solutions uh, from the day one and as the, the, there is no uh, heavy infrastructure on the organization side there is no need to have uh, let's say huge servers on your side and also the it persons overheads or it persons hassle such as managing the data managing the upgrades and all those things will be reduced so that the now uh, people will be more uh, tend towards the development process of the product so that uh, the collaboration between the multiple discipline people or the multiple location teams uh, can be happen in real time and as the maintenance is also uh, negligible which is the dassault's responsibility to have uh, the upgradation done uh, overnight this helps to have the better innovation process so this uh, uh comes to an end